Good morning, UTLA family, parents, and community members. Thank you, as always, for joining us in this virtual space where we can talk about what's going on and stay connected with each other. Thank you, educators, for going above and beyond the call. And thank you, parents and grandparents, our partners in crisis distance learning. Today, I will be correcting the record on UTLA's position on reopening schools, the impact of COVID-19 on our communities, and LAUSD's after-school tutoring program, updates on distance learning, and our fight to pass Proposition 15 and get Scott Schmerlson and Patty Casellanos on the school board. I would like to address some of the unfortunate misinformation circulating about UTLA and the physical reopening of schools. You may have heard negative things from organizations that are funded and aligned with corporate privatizers, some of whom are echoing anti-quarantine talking points from the right-wing mega donors like the Koch brothers. Let me say this again for the record. We want nothing more than to be back in physical schools with our students, our babies. We miss them, but we need to be real. We are in a pandemic, a health crisis unlike anything we have ever seen, and our lives are at stake. Asking teachers to make up for society's shortfalls is nothing new, but it's not right. Besides a national failure of leadership, there are two culprits to our current situation, COVID-19 and a lack of funding for our schools. Let me say this with love because there is a lot of hate out there. COVID-19 is unlike anything we have ever seen before. The disease has killed 200,000 people in this country and spreads through our communities rapidly. Workers are being asked to risk their lives every day. And you know who suffers the most? Men, women, and children of color. Nationally, Black and Latino children are number one in infection and death rates from COVID-19. That is a staggering, eye-opening statistic. Then you look at LAUSD, where 90% are students of color. Many of our students' parents have essential jobs that put them at more risk. Working families who do not have the fortune to work from home have experienced how this disease can impact their families and communities. Some of them have seen firsthand a family member gasping for every breath, have watched in fear as an ambulance takes, ambulance takes a loved one to the hospital alone. Because this disease is so contagious that people must be taken to the hospital alone without any family to support them. And these disparities are almost certainly why in survey after survey of parents, there is a clear racial and income divide on school reopening preferences. Although parents of color and low income parents are most concerned about how remote learning will affect their children's schooling, they are also the most likely to consider it necessary for the next school year. One survey found that at least twice as many black Latino and Asian parents wanted schools to be remote compared to white parents. A majority of parents who made less than $50,000 a year wanted schools to avoid in-person instruction for the entire school year. There is nothing political about saving lives. We must let science guide us not politics or fear. We know some of our most vulnerable students are students with special needs and English language learners 
are far more acutely impacted by remote learning challenges. That is why UTLA is meeting with the district to discuss one-on-one -on -one services on campus for our most neediest students. This would be on a volunteer basis and after school. We have met with the district, but they have yet to provide a plan with written safety protocols or a clear program description. We will continue talking with the district to ensure a program that is safe and effective. But if your principal is asking or encouraging you to volunteer, we must discourage you from doing so until the district provides a written plan with appropriate and uniform safety protocols that UTLA can support. Our health and safety expectations for after school in person services are the same as for school day in person learning. That the proper resources and policies, including testing, tracing, personal protective gear, disinfection protocols, and proper ventilation must be in place for UTLA to encourage our members to voluntarily provide an in-person services. These last few months have been a great challenge, frustration, anxiety, and pain in LAUSD. As a society, we face educational, economic, social, and racial attacks. This is one of the most challenging moments in modern history. To parents, we feel you. We know you are juggling work, family, managing Zoom, materials, apps, schoolwork, and homework. Thank you for trying your best, for having a smile, for being strong, for your family, for learning new things, for making sure your children feel loved and supported. For every Zoom meltdown, for every lesson plan blown up by tech problems, we have to celebrate things that are working and the amazing teaching going on under extraordinary difficult circumstances. Catalina Wong teaches early transitional kindergarten at Lane Elementary in Monterey Park. Her class is studying apples. So the children did a taste test of Red Delicious, Golden Delicious, and Granny Smith apples, and then used the apple pieces to build whatever they wanted. And these kids delivered with the creativity, building stars, houses, unicorns, family members, and towers. Hey, a unicorn made out of apples sounds pretty impressive to me. And I love unicorns, go laces. Catalina is also getting creative about replicating elements of her classroom at students' homes. And she's working with parents to make their own sensory bins for the children for tactile stimulation and imagin imaginative play. At Emerson Middle School, my former colleague, Noriko Nakata, is committed to helping students find what Angie Thomas and Dr. Rudin Sims Bishop call books that provide both mirrors and windows to their experiences. She set up her classroom as a safe distance learning little library where students can visit campus, head up to their English classroom and self-select books the next book they can love. Her room is stacked with graphic novels like John Lewis's March series. Marjan Strappy's Persepolis. The Angie Thomas pairing of The Hate You Give and On the Come Up. Various Jason Reynolds titles and To Kill a Mockingbird and Just Mercy duo. English teachers all over LAUSD are finding creative ways 
to make sure our kids have books in their hands to help them remember the power and magic of reading. And I wanna give a shout out to an organization that UTLA has been an active member of since 20, 2006, Californians Together. Californians Together is a statewide coalition, a powerful organization from all segments of the education community, including teachers, administrators, board members, parents, civil rights, nonprofit groups. Our member organizations come together around the goal of better educating our state's 1.1 million English learners. This group has taken leadership roles in advocating for DACA, Prop 58, and bilingualism for all, supporting migrant students, and lately supporting language learners during COVID. Shara Ortega, UTLA board member for bilingual education, is our proud liaison to this organization. Okay, now on to updates on crisis distance learning issues. Split or combo classes with more than one grade level continue to be an issue. Per, per our distance learning side letter agreement with the district, your site administrators should make every effort to use substitute educators and pool teachers to avoid split classes. Unfortunately, very few of our day-to-day -day substitute members have the necessary credential to carry a roster and eliminate a split class, but they are able to provide extensive support in the management of a split class including implementing lessons, providing targeted instruction, and reaching out to parents. Additionally, the site administrator is required to provide a written rationale for why the split class is necessary. And the site administrator needs to be held accountable by members and parents at the site for providing one. We've also heard from a number of early childhood that their administrator told them they need to go to work sites this week to clean their classrooms for an eventual return. Please know that per our crisis distance learning agreement, going to your physical school site is voluntary at this time, and there are no dates for a return to in-person teaching. We're also hearing from itinerant arts teachers and teacher librarians about evaluations. These are the folks who are permanent district employees already, but who happen to be in a new position. One significant victory in our crisis distance learning agreement is that permanent employees will not be evaluated during this unprecedented year. Even if the credential you are currently using for your position this year is not cleared, you should not be evaluated because you are a permanent district employee. If you are a permanent employee who is scheduled to be evaluated this year, notify your chapter chair and ask for a written statement from your administrator that you are to be evaluated. Your chapter chair will work with UTLA staff to clarify this issue. Now I want to share two UTLA chapter victories against teacher displacement. Last week was norm day when LAUSD usually resets classroom rosters based on class size numbers. These results or this results in damaging upheaval with classes being closed, students being moved and teachers being displaced from their schools. It's never a good thing, but this year, our students need more stability, not less. At Crescent Heights Elementary in the West Area, parents and students showed up big time to save two teachers from being moved from the school, holding a rally in front of the school and reaching out to district leaders. This week, the district confirmed that the teachers would stay at the school. Third grade teacher, Ms. Dunlap, 
whose position was saved called the students change agents and the parents warriors. Great work led by Crescent Heights chapter chair, Maisha Bacon, vice chair, Amy Owen, and parent organizers, Ms. Rodriguez and Ms. Alvarez. At Estrella Elementary in the Central Area, new chapter chair, Michelle Valadez, and her vice chair, Irma Aldana, organized to save a first grade class and fifth grade class from closing. Parents got involved and called the district. The community signed a petition to the principal, and then the teachers held an emergency meeting with the administration. They ultimately got the principal to use all available funds to keep both classes open. These are important wins for our students to protect their continuity of instruction. Parents and educators together are fighting the good fight for our kids. It's amazing that so much great organizing is going on by new chapter chairs like Michelle Valadez. Thank you to all our new leaders, like new chapter chair, Renee Sinegram at Burroughs Middle School, who are stepping up to serve their members this year. Every week, we see more proof that we can organize in our virtual space to advocate for our profession and our students. Chapter leaders like Martha Castillo and Susie Quintero from 96th Street Elementary have been instrumental in helping push back on excessive virtual classroom observations that disrupt teaching time, meaningless test prep from the Achievement Network, and reaffirming that teachers are the professional experts in the classroom. And a shout out to Ms. Thornton, Giovanni's teacher. Thank you for creating some cool social science projects this week. He enjoyed the geological dig with chocolate chip cookies, of course. We may be physically apart, but we are together in union spirit and together in building power. I hope every UTLA chapter is holding regular weekly faculty meetings and wearing red to show solidarity and participating in UTLA Woke Wednesdays. This new effort came out of the UTLA area meetings and the UTLA House of Reps. It calls for ongoing Woke Wednesdays where we wear apparel related to racial and social justice movements in order to educate support and highlight communities that are marginalized and oppressed for the purpose of sparking meaningful, empathetic educational conversations amongst communities. San Pedro High teacher Maya Suzuki Daniels says she's been grateful for Woke Wednesdays because they give her an opportunity to reflect on the things that are going on in the world. She selects her Woke Wednesday shirt with care and posts on Instagram to start dialogues. Way to go, Maya. We got some good news about Prop 15 this week. The LA Times endorsed the measure, urging people to be fearless and vote yes. The LA Times says Prop 15 will help make California financially healthy again and fix the wildly unfair, lopsided property tax system that starves local governments and schools of the revenue we need. And a new poll shows that most California voters support Prop 15. That poll is a double-edged sword, however. It's great to know that for the first time in decades, we have a real shot at passing a significant tax reform and revenue generating measure. But on the downside, we know that this poll will trigger the opposition to double down on lies and misinformation. 
The corporate opposition will say anything to scare voters and defend their billions in property loopholes. A judge removed more than 100 words from their proposed ballot argument for false or misleading scare tactics. Their number one lie, that Prop 15 hurts homeowners. You may hear your friends or family repeat that untruth. Please don't let it go unanswered. The truth is that property taxes will not change for homeowners or small businesses. The measure specifically protects them. Encourage family and friends to read the actual ballot measure and check out the facts at www.yes15.org backslash debunk. The spending we're seeing to spread Prop 15 misinformation is paralleled by the spending to spread negative ads about our school board candidates, Scott Schmerlson and Patty Castellanos. Last week, I told you the charter lobby had spent $700,000 to defeat Scott and Patty. Well, that number became outdated almost as soon as I said it. This week, Jim Walton of Walmart and Reese Hastings spent $1 million in one day to support Scott's opponent, who is a charter school executive. In all, $4 million has been spent already, and we know more money is coming. We must take on the billionaires again and win. With a huge state budget deficit looming, we can't have the balance of power on the school board tilted toward the privatizers. Vote and campaign for Scott Schmerlson and Patricia Castellanos. Every UTLA member needs to commit to a one, two, three for victory. Committing one, two, three means doing three things. One, signing the online pledge and commit to vote for Proposition 15. Two, joining your school's team for phone banking from home, of course, for four hours in September and four hours in October. Talk to your chapter chair or sign up at lateacherschoice.org backslash hashtag campaign now. And three, if you're in board district three or board district seven, committing to vote for Scott Schmerlson or Patricia Castellanos and letting your chapter chair know. Our cause is righteous. We only lose if the lies take hold. We only lose if we don't reach enough voters. Please commit today to those three actions. And by the way, the League of Women Voters are hosting a District 7 candidate forum tomorrow evening where our candidate is speaking. See the link in the chat below. When it comes to recruiting phone bankers, the top spot goes to the team at Beachy Avenue in Valley East who so far have had the most people sign up. Their team is chapter chair, Oralia Reyes. Vice chair, Rocio Lopez. And cat member, Omar Moreno. Great job, Beachy. This brings me to an exciting action happening next Wednesday, September 30th at 4 p.m. at the Chevron Refinery in El Segundo. Chevron is one of the many huge multinational companies spending big to defeat Prop 15 to protect their unfair tax advantages. Chevron has two refineries in California. Because of unfair tax laws, 
these properties were last reassessed in 1975. So Chevron is paying out of date property taxes while newer refineries pay a much higher rate. Under Prop 15, Chevron would pay an estimated $5 million to $9 million more each year in property taxes to benefit schools and local services. Chevron is a bad actor all around. Besides their contribution to climate destruction, they are an active donor to the Trump campaign. UTLA and the community will be at the El Segundo refinery on September 30th to demand Chevron pay their fair share for our schools and stop attacking Prop 15. This should be an energetic action with students, parents, community members, and folks from change-making organizations like ACE, Lane, Students Deserve, and our Reclaim Our Schools LA. It starts at 4 p.m. on Wednesday. It will be a car caravan. And if you haven't done one of those yet during the pandemic, they are really fun and safe. I encourage everyone to come, but I'm especially making a call out to those folks who live near El Segundo, like in Westchester, Gardena, Inglewood, and South LA. This action is a part of a national day of resistance with communities on the front lines for racial justice in the US public school system. We've got a link for more info. It's bit.ly backslash September 30th, LA. We'll also put the link to the event in the chat. It's inspiring to talk about and connect with all of the great work going on out there. But I have to say, even as we all get stronger, more resilient in our new normal, the world keeps delivering heavy blows. Last Friday, it was the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We lost an American icon in the fight for gender equality, women's rights, civil rights, labor rights, and justice for all. She was a role model for women and for everyone who believes in democracy. Her passing means more than a seat on the nine justice Supreme Court. The death of Justice Ginsburg is a devastating loss to a society in desperate need of this powerful and brilliant champion. It's a loss that will be felt for generations. And this week, Justice was brutally denied for Breonna Taylor and her family. I'm saddened and weary, but not surprised over the lack of the charges against the officers who killed Breonna. I felt like this after Trayvon, Mike, Sandra, Tamir, Eric, Philando, and so many more. Every time I struggle to find the words to explain what's happened to my son, Giovanni. This isn't the world I want him to inherit. Things have got to change, folks. And we all need to be a part of that change. This is why I continue to say, Black Lives Matter. What civil rights activist Ella Baker said more than 50 years ago remains tragically relevant today. She said, until the killing of black men, black mother's sons becomes as important to the rest of the country as the killing of white mother's sons, we who believe in freedom cannot rest 
until this happens. Take care of yourself this weekend. Get some rest. Until next time, I wish you continued resilience. Stay UTLA strong because together we rise. Hello, my name is Guadalupe Carrasco Cardona and I'm a teacher for Los Angeles Unified School District Roybal Learning Center. I have been a teacher for 21 years this school year and I've taught many of the different courses that are um, considered social studies like US history, world history, but I've also been an electives teacher and an English teacher for a long time. So I've taught yearbook, journalism, and most recently ethnic studies and also theater, which I love very much. And so I urge you to vote for Prop 15 because I really believe we could use that money to hire more teachers and lower our class sizes. Last year I had um, up to 45 students in a class and even though I loved all of my students, it was very difficult to give them all of the attention that they needed. And it was also very difficult to ensure that I gave all of them timely feedback to their work and to their performances. And so if we um, had Prop 15 pass and we were able to get some of those monies into schools, I could really see it benefiting um, students and the, the greater community by making those class sizes smaller. So I urge you to come out to vote or mail in your ballots by November 3rd and vote yes to Prop 15. Thank you. <laughs>